Hi guys, welcome back to Creative Tap. Now in this tutorial we're going to be looking at three NLEs, also known as non-linear editors. Um, now if you don't know the difference between a linear, ed linear editing and non-linear editing, um, I'll leave a link in the description below to a video where I discuss the difference between linear editing and non-linear editing. But anyway, this video is going to discuss the three, in my view, main non-linear editors, which is Avid, Pro Avid Media Composer, Premiere Pro and Final Cut Pro. Um, so I'm going to break them down a little bit, kind of give you a little bit of background about them and kind of of a say which my favourite is and my, my preferred one is but give you a little bit of information on the three of them. So firstly we're going to talk about probably my favourite non-linear editor which is Premiere Pro. Now the reason Premiere Pro is my favourite per, is probably a personal thing. Um, it's the one I've used the longest. I've used it, I used it since CS3 which I don't know what year that was. That was at least 10 years ago I think more. Um, so I've used it the longest which is prob probably a little bit of a biased opinion but the good thing about it, which is where I think it can stand out from Avid and Final Cut, is if you're using After Effects alongside it, which again, I often do motion graphics and sort of visual effects background, right? Um, it's got the dynamic link, so you can, if you, your work in After Effects can link straight over and you can drag it straight in to Premiere Pro, which is a huge thing. Um, and I have used Final Cut Pro before. And personally, I just I I'm just not a fan of the user interface of Final Cut Pro either. Now um, I think so. Yeah, Premiere Pro is an Adobe product. Like I said, you can get it for around I think twenty dollars a month. You may have to check up on that. You know, as this video gets older, that may change. Um, it used to be that you had to buy it as a product um, back when it was CS4 or CS5. You know, the Creative Suite. Um, you could probably get in a package, but now with Creative Cloud, they do a subscription software, so you pay monthly. And I think you can get it for around £20 a month, which is which is decent. Um, again, you might be able to get educational licenses, but you know, there's been a lot of updates recently with the Lumetri scopes, which is um, really enhanced the sort of colour grading and or that sort of that film look, that cinematic look. These Lumetri scopes, I think it was. CC 2018 or 2017, I could be wrong, I don't know which one of those it is, can't remember. Um, but the introduction of that, um, it, you know, it, it is very good and it does have, you know, some masking capabilities in there. But if you're going to do any masking, it would probably be beneficial, more beneficial to do it in something like After Effects because then you can link that across with that dynamic link server. Um, so that's really, really, really good. Um, yeah, so you can tell I'm probably a bit biased towards Premiere Pro. So. We're going to start talking about Final Cut Pro now, and you can tell from earlier in the video that I'm a big lover of Premiere Pro, but I'm going to try and give Final Cut Pro, uh, you know, a, a good a good review as well. But let's just talk about it. So back in 2011 when it first came out, not when it first came out, but when it came out in 2011, um, it was missing, you know, quite a lot of tools, and it wasn't kind of all there. Um, so again, I can kind of carry on using Premiere Pro. Uh, but that was me. Um, my one of my other problems with it, the con, is uh, the fact that it's only, you can only get it from the Mac, Mac App Store or the Mac Store or whatever. I don't have a Mac. Um, but yeah, you can only use it on Macs, so that for me is quite a big con. Now, if you're a video editor, I would say that the three I'm talking about, Premiere Pro, Avid and Final Cut, best thing you can do is, is learn all of them. Because if you're doing freelance stuff or if you go into industry and you say, well, what can you use? I can use Premiere and they say, oh, well, we use Avid. It's kind of screwed. So. I would actually say, don't take my opinion or my preference, have a look at them all. Um, now when it comes to kind of user interface, I think Final Cut Pro looks pretty but the area I think that it kind of falls flat is you can't do as much kind of configuration with it as you can with Premiere Pro and what I mean by that is you can kind of move panels around and kind of really personalize your workspace in Premiere Pro and I, I personally find it's not as doable or as user friendly in that sense in Final Cut Pro. Now in terms of formats, um, Final Cut Pro supports all the kind of native sort of red, um, or red formats, all the kind of formats you really need so I think actually um, both Premiere Pro and um, and Final Cut are good with that, um, as is Avid. So I think they all kind of tie there anyway, um, which which is a good thing. 
So another thing to mention about um, Final Cut Pro is that it does now support 360 video, which again, Premiere does as well. Um, but before I was kind of looking at doing this video, I was doing a little bit more research into Final Cut Pro and I was actually surprised to find that it does support that. Again, you can tell I'm very Premiere Pro, can't you? But um, yes, yeah, so they, they do both support um, 360 video, which is really, really good because that's a very, very emerging area and I can't see it going away for a while. Okay, now finally, we've got Avid Media Composer. Now, Avid Media Composer, um, there's arguments to say, uh, I've spoken to a lot of people about this, um, both in and out of industry, and I've never really got a clear answer, because I'm not an editor, I'm a visual effects artist. Um, but I've heard people say, oh, you know, Avid's not really used anymore, but on the counter to that, I've heard so many people say, no, Avid is the way forward, it, it's being used in massively in industry. And I've heard that from both from people who don't work in industry and who do. So. I'm probably not the expert to talk on this, um, but I have used it a few times before now. It is another non-linear editor, and when I saw people using it when I was in studio, actually, it looks a lot more efficient. Um, it look, it, it's definitely, I can definitely say this, it's a steeper learning curve than the other two, um, but friends who are working in industry, they tend, to, they tend to be the ones saying that it's the thing to learn. If you have that on your CV, it's very, very good. It's, it's def I, I would be saying it's industry standard. Now, if, if you know different, by all means, leave us a comment below and, and you give us your information. Um, the one thing I will say about it is it's got a couple of things called Phrase Finder and Script Sync. Now, Phrase Find, Phrase Find is basically where you've got loads of dialogue which it analyzes, and if you type in a, a keyword, it'll find those cl certain clips with those dialogues. So it's a, it's a nice kind of search algorithm to get those clips out. You've also got Script Sync where it'll look at your script and then it'll analyze the dialogue and try and match clips to certain bits of the script so you can find things quicker. And that's really, really good. Now, in terms of all the native kind of file formats which it's going to read, it's going to read red. It's going to read all of the kind of industry standard ones, okay? Um, just like Premium Final Cut, which is good, because these are the three, I would say, the three industry standards. Um, Avid, personally, I would have thought that's the, that's the beefier boy, you know, the biggest one. Um, also, in terms of export, you're going to be able to use all, all codecs you really need to. Um, it's, it's going to have all the output formats you need. So, I'm going to finish with a little summary. Um, Premiere Pro is always my go-to. Um, it's just a personal thing. I've been using it a lot longer. Um, but if I was massively into editing, I, I only edit YouTube videos, really, um, and one or two short films. But um, Mainly, I'm a visual effects person. I mean, if I was massively into editing, I'd probably be using Avid because it's really built for it. It's got a lot, lot, really lot to offer. Um, I would be saying it's kind of very industry standard. I know people who are using it. Um, and also, especially if you're doing a lot of collaborative work, I've heard that's where Avid is, is it can be really good as well. Um, again, Final Cut Pro, uh, not really for me because I'm not an Apple person and so I don't really use it that much. Um, only a little bit in work sometimes when I'm teaching. Um, but yeah, Premiere Pro is my go-to, but whatever kind of suits you. Again, like I said earlier, if you're looking at going into editing, it's going to be worth your while knowing, knowing the three of them, because at least then you can go in and say, look, I know all three of these. That's great. Um, so if you disagree with anything I've said, by all means, leave comments below. Um, but yeah, hopefully this kind of uh, helped you out and hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next video.